Welcome back ladies and gents. In this YouTube video I'll be looking at 7.6 connected particles. 7.6 represents chapter 7 section 6 of the Pearson A level Maths Applied Maths Year 2 textbook. Here is exam style question 1. So we have particles A and B that are connected by a light inextensible string. A lies on a rough inclined plane, the pulley is smooth, the system is released from rest and the particle A begins to move up the plane. The coefficient of friction between A and the plane is a half and tan alpha is equal to 3 over 4. For the motion before A reaches the pulley, part A, part 1, write down the equation of motion for A, part 2, write down the equation of motion for B. Now, I'm going to start by labelling all the forces acting in this particular scenario. Let's first of all start by creating a split over here and over here. By creating this split, I can look at all the forces acting on the particle A only, the pulley only and B only. Let's have a look at the particle B. For the particle B we have the weight acting vertically downwards that will be 3mg where g is equal to 9.8. We will have tension acting upwards to prevent the string from breaking. Okay. By Newton's third law for this action there's an equal but opposite reaction so tension acting in this direction for the pulley. So we've got this part labelled, let's move on to the particle A. For the particle A, I can start by labelling the weight which acts vertically downwards. So that weight will be 2mg. This weight has component forces, we can construct a right angle triangle. This component is perpendicular to the plane and this component over here is parallel to the plane. We know that this angle is alpha, we can put in the arrows, this is 90 degrees. The adjacent component of the weight will just be 2mg cos alpha and the parallel component of the weight will be 2mg sine alpha. Because the particle A is in contact with the plane, there will be a normal reaction coming out, okay, which acts perpendicular to the contact surface. We know that the particle A begins to move up the plane, and since the plane is rough, friction therefore has to act down the plane. So we can label the friction. When a particle is moving, Friction is at its maximum. We know that F max is given by mu r. So we can label the friction as mu r. Specifically, it will be a half, which is your mu, multiplied by r a, the normal reaction at a. Now, there will be tension acting over here, which will be upwards. This will prevent the string from breaking, okay? hence allowing the particle A to move upwards. By Newton's third law, for this action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. So that tension force will act over here in the opposite direction for the pulley. That there, ladies and gents, is my complete force diagram. So let's start off with part A, part 1. Write down the equation of motion for A. So we're going to resolve for A only, which means that we are interested in all the forces acting on A only. Forget the pulley, forget the particle B. I'm going to be resolving in the direction of the acceleration, which is up the plane. Okay, using F equal M A. We know that A begins to move up the plane, so we can label the acceleration acting in the upwards direction in relationship to that plane. Okay, So this particle B will move downwards, so we can label that acceleration downwards. Why is the acceleration the same for both particles when the string is taught? Well, if we go back to the question, we know that A and B are connected by a light inextensible string. So when the string is inextensible, the acceleration is the same for both particles that are connected by that string. 
when it is taught. That is our modeling assumption. Anyways, resolving in the direction of the acceleration using F equal MA allows us to generate an equation of motion for A before it reaches the pulley. So what is the resultant force? Well, it will just be T minus 2 mg sine alpha minus a half RA equal to your mass multiplied by the acceleration. So the mass is 2m, not 2mg. 2mg is the weight, so the mass is 2m, and we multiply that by the acceleration, a. And that there is the equation of motion for a before it reaches the pulley. Let's move on to part two. Write down the equation of motion for b. So now we're going to resolve for b only. We're going to resolve in the direction of the acceleration. So B is accelerating downwards. So we take downwards to be the positive direction and we're going to use F equal MA to generate our equation of motion. So if we're looking at B only, forget the pulley, forget the particle A, the resultant force will be 3mg minus T equal to the mass of particle B, which is 3m okay multiplied by the acceleration a that there is the equation of motion for particle b right part b find in terms of g the acceleration of a okay so let's have a look at part b we have two equations the first one t minus 2 mg sine alpha minus a half r a equal to 2 ma and the second one 3 mg minus t is equal to 3m a. Now what is the exact value of sine alpha? We've got tan alpha equal 3 over 4. Let's construct a triangle. So the opposite is 3 and the adjacent is 4. By Pythagoras theorem, hypotenuse will just be 5. So we've got sine alpha equal opposite of a hypotenuse which will be 3 over 5 cos alpha is equal adjacent of a hypotenuse which will just be 4 over 5. Okay so now I can substitute sine alpha which is 3 over 5 into here to reduce the equation to something that looks more simple. So if I do this I get t minus 6mg over 5 minus a half ra is equal to 2ma. We can call this equation 1 so that is the equation of motion for A. And this one over here we can call equation 2. The equation of motion for B. Our target is to work out the acceleration. If I add these two equations, that will eliminate the tension. But the issue is, I don't know what RA is, the normal reaction of the particle A. So I need to proceed forward to first work out the normal reaction of the particle a. So let's resolve for A only. We're going to resolve perpendicular to the plane. And we know that the particle A is not moving perpendicular to the plane, so the resultant force F is equal to 0. So we're going to use that to generate the equation of motion for particle A perpendicular to the plane. So that will be RA minus 2 mg cos alpha. So Ra minus 2 mg cos alpha, this must equal 0. So now we can make Ra the subject. So Ra, the normal reaction of the particle A, is equal to 2 mg cos alpha. I know the exact value of cos alpha, it is 4 over 5, so I can substitute that in. And if I do this, I get Ra is equal to 8mg over 5. We can call this equation 3. The next step is to substitute equation 3 into equation 1 to eliminate the RA. So if we do this and we simplify, we end up with T minus 2mg equal to 2mA. Okay? 
So that there is equation 1 with RA substituted. So I've got this equation over here, and I've also got this equation over here. So I can bring this equation down. I've got 3mg minus t is equal to 3ma. We can add the two equations. By doing this, we are eliminating the tension force. So the tension force gets eliminated. Minus 2mg plus 3mg will just be mg. So mg is equal to 2ma plus 3ma, which is going to be 5ma. Okay, so we have mg is equal to 5ma. We can divide both sides by m, which will cancel out the m, giving us g equal 5a. Hence, a is equal to g over 5 meters per second per second. That there is the acceleration of a in terms of g. Right, so let's move on to part C now. For part C, we want to find the magnitude of the force exerted on the pulley by the string. So let's have a look at the pulley now. Forget A, forget B. We've got this tension force over here, which is parallel to the slope. We've got this tension force as well. And we know that the angle over here is alpha. If I was to stretch the tension, angle alpha, I can label it over here. This part over here has to therefore be 90 degrees perpendicular. Right. In what direction does the resultant force act? Well, the resultant force will act in this direction, like that. Okay, this will be your resultant. Okay, that's your resultant. The resultant will bisect this whole angle into two equal parts. So we can call this theta and we can call this theta. Now, suppose I take this tension force and I bring it along here. Okay, so I've got something like this. I've created a force triangle, TT resultant. Okay. I can bring this down as well, like that, and we know that if this is alpha, this part over here is alpha. This can be seen by the geometry of my diagram. Now, there is a very special type of angle that we have here from GCSE, alternate angles, okay, Z shape, alternate angles are equal, so this part over here has to be alpha. Right, so I'm going to draw this triangle again over here, as you can see. This whole angle is 90 plus alpha. Okay, 90 plus alpha. This is my resultant force. And these two are my tension forces. What we want to try and calculate is the magnitude of R, the force exerted on the pulley by the string. To do this, we can use the cosine rule. R squared is equal to T squared plus T squared minus 2 multiplied by T multiplied by T, which is T squared, cosine of 90 degrees plus alpha. But what is cos 90 degrees plus alpha? Well, if I use the addition formula cos A plus B on cos 90 degrees plus alpha, I will end up with minus sine alpha. So I can replace the cos 90 degrees plus alpha with minus sine alpha to make this particular equation more simple to work with. And also the fact that we know what sine alpha is. Okay, it's 3 over 5, we can plug that in. So we've got R squared is equal to t squared plus t squared, which is 2t squared. If you replace cos 90 degrees plus alpha with minus sine alpha, the two negatives will become positive, so we would have plus 2t squared sine alpha. But we know what sine alpha is. It is 3 over 5, so I can put that in as well. This reduces the equation to r squared is equal to 
2t squared plus 6 over 5t squared. Simplifying further gives me r squared is equal to 16 over 5t squared. Now, we want the magnitude of the force exerted on the pulley by the string. So we're going to take the positive square root. So r is equal to the square root of 16 over 5t squared. We need to find the tension force in order to work out the force exerted on the pulley by the string. So what I can potentially do is take my acceleration and put it into one of the equations that I've generated. So if I was to take my acceleration and if I was to put it into equation 2 for example, I can rearrange and work out the tension force. So let's substitute a equal g over 5 into equation 2. So we would have 3mg minus t is equal to 3m multiplied by g over 5. So if we rearrange and make t the subject, we get t equal 12mg over 5. So I know what my t is. I can put that back into here to work out the force exerted on the pulley by the string. So we have r equal to square root of 16 over 5 multiplied by my tension squared. So 12mg over 5 squared. If I simplify this, I end up with r equal to 48 root 5 over 25 mg. So that there's a force exerted on the pulley by the string. Here is exam style question 2. Particles P and Q are connected by a light and extensible string. P lies on a rough slope, so for this slope over here we have friction. And Q lies on a smooth slope. So for this slope over here, we have no friction. Tan alpha is equal to 3 over 4 and tan beta is equal to 4 over 3. The coefficient of friction between P and the plane is a quarter, given that P is on the point of slipping down the first plane. So this is the first plane. And the system is in limiting equilibrium. Part A, find the value of M. Part B, find the magnitude of the force exerted on the pulley by the string. First of all, we know that the system is in limiting equilibrium, so if we were to label friction, it will be at its maximum. So F max is given by mu r. Now I'm going to label all the forces acting on this particular situation. First of all, we can create a split. The split will help us determine all the forces acting on the particle P separately, the pulley separately, and particle Q separately. So we've got P here, we've got the pulley over here, and we've got Q over here. Let's start off with the particle P. The weight is acting vertically downwards, that is 4G. We can construct a right angle triangle to label the component forces. This is the perpendicular component, this is the parallel component. This angle is alpha, which is precisely this angle. We can put in the arrows. The adjacent will just be 4g cos alpha, and the opposite would be 4g sine alpha. Because the particle P is in contact with the surface, there will be a normal reaction coming out, which is perpendicular to the surface. So here is my normal reaction. I can call that RP. Particle P is on the point of slipping down the plane, so friction needs to act up the plane. So we can label the friction up the plane. That will just be given by mu times r. So specifically, the mu in this situation is a quarter, the coefficient of friction. And the normal reaction of the particle P, I've called it rp. So a quarter rp. Given that P is on the point of slipping down the plate, to prevent the string from breaking, the tension has to act up the plate. By Newton's third law, for this action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. So for the pulley over here, the tension acts down the plate. Uh, we're going to look at the direction of this tension force, but let's first label the forces acting on the particle Q. We've got the weight acting vertically downwards, 
Okay, so that weight will be mg. We can construct a right angle triangle to label the component forces. So we need to be careful here. Sketch it properly. So this over here is your perpendicular component. This is the parallel component. Because this is beta, this angle is beta, we can put in the arrows. This is your adjacent, so that component will be mg cos beta. This is the opposite, so this component would be mg sine beta. Okay, so we've got our component forces there. To prevent the string from breaking due to the weight of this particular particle, the tension over here has to act up the plane. By Newton's third law, for this action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. So the tension in the string over here for the pulley is going to act down the plane. This plane over here is smooth, there is no friction. Because particle Q is in contact with the surface, there will be a normal reaction for particle Q, which is perpendicular to the contact surface. We can label that as our Q. That there, ladies and gents, is the complete force diagram in this particular situation. Now, before I proceed with part A, I'm going to construct a right angle triangle for this tan alpha and for this tan beta. So let's start off with tan alpha equal to 3 over 4. So here's the right angle triangle. Opposite of the adjacent, so the opposite is 3, adjacent is 4. Hence, we can calculate sine alpha and cos alpha. We know by Pythagoras' theorem this is 5. So sine alpha is opposite of a hypotenuse, which is 3 over 5. And cos alpha is adjacent of a hypotenuse, which is 4 over 5. Right, so that there's the triangle for tan alpha. Now I'm going to construct a triangle for tan beta. So we know that tan beta is equal to 4 over 3. Let's call this angle beta. So we have that opposite is over the adjacent. So the opposite is 4 over here. The adjacent is 3 over here. This is the hypotenuse, which is 5. So from this triangle, we've got that sine beta is equal opposite of a hypotenuse, which is 4 over 5. Cos beta is equal to adjacent of a hypotenuse, which is 3 over 5. So let's have a look at part A. In part A, we want to find the value of m. m is associated to particle Q because it is the mass of particle Q. So I'm going to start by resolving. So resolve for Q only. Let's resolve parallel to the slope. And let's take down the slope to be the positive direction. We know that the system is in limiting equilibrium. So the particles are not moving, hence the resultant force F is equal to zero. Okay, now, what is my resultant force F? Well, it will be mg sine beta minus t equal to zero. We can make m the subject, so if we do this, we get m equal to t divided by g sine beta. But we know what the exact value of sine beta is. It is 4 over 5. So m is equal to t divided by 4 over 5 g. To work out the value of m, I need to first work out the tension. Okay, so t equal question mark. Now I'm going to resolve for particle p only. So let's resolve parallel to the plane, taking upwards to be the positive direction. Because the system is in limiting equilibrium, we know that the resultant force F is equal to zero. Okay, so what will the resultant force be? We've got T minus 4G sine alpha plus a quarter RP. This must equal to zero. So we can make t the subject. t is equal to 4g sine alpha minus a quarter rp. 
but we know the exact value of sine alpha, it is 3 over 5, so we can substitute that in. If we do this, we end up with the following result. T equal 12G over 5 minus a quarter RP. Now, to get the tension force, we need to work out RP. So what is RP equal to? Well, to work out RP, I'm going to be resolving perpendicular to the plane for the particle P only. So if we resolve perpendicular to the plane, taking upwards to be the positive direction, and we know that the resultant force F is equal to zero because the system is in limiting equilibrium, the resultant force will be RP minus 4G cos alpha. So RP minus 4G cos alpha. This must equal zero. So RP is equal to 4G cos alpha. We know the exact value of cos alpha, it is 4 over 5, so we can substitute that in. And if we do this, we get RP is equal to 16G over 5. Okay, now, if I go back to this particular equation, I can call that equation 1. And this one of here, I can call it equation 2. And this one, equation 3. Now we're going to substitute equation 3 into equation 2 to work out the tension force. So sub 3 into 2. So if we do this, we get the following result. T is equal to 12G over 5 minus a quarter multiplied by 16G over 5. We can put this into our calculator and we get T equal 8G over 5. So now I can put that T back into equation 1 to work out the mass of particle Q. So M is equal to 8G over 5 divided by 4 over 5G. If I put this into my calculator, I get 2. So the mass of uh, particle Q would just be 2kg. Moving on to part B. Find the magnitude of the force exerted on the pulley by the string. Okay, so we've got part B. We're going to be focusing on the pulley. This tension force and this tension force are parallel to the slopes, respectively. I'm going to form a diagram. So this is my diagram over here. We've got this tension force and we've got this tension force over here. This angle is alpha, this angle is beta. Now the resultant force will act in, in this direction. And that resultant force will bisect this whole angle into two equal parts. So this part of here is theta, and this part of here is theta. Right, now we can take this tension force, bring it down here. So if we do that, we get something like this. Okay. This part of here, we can bring it down as well. As you can see from the geometry, if that's alpha, this part here is alpha. Alternate angles are equal. We've got a Z shape. So this angle over here is alpha. Okay, now I'm going to construct another triangle and that triangle would just be this triangle over here. Right, this whole angle is alpha plus beta. But what is alpha plus beta equal to? If you go back to these two triangles, you can see that they're the same triangle. This part of here is alpha, this part over here is beta, okay? Angles in a triangle add up to 180. So this means that alpha plus beta must equal 90 degrees. So this angle, instead of labeling as alpha plus beta, we can label it as a right angle. We have a right angle triangle. To work out R, we can simply use Pythagoras theorem. So square root t squared plus t squared. We take the positive square root because we're calculating the magnitude of the force exerted on the pulley by the string. So R is equal to, we've got T, which is 8G over 5, square that, plus 8G over 5, square that again. Put this into your calculator and you end up with 22.2 newtons to three significant figures. So that there completes part B of the question which is to find the magnitude of the force exerted on the pulley by the string. And this exam style question. Here is exam style question three. 
Particles A and B are connected by a light and extensible string. The smooth pulley is fixed at the edge of the table. Particle A is at rest on a rough horizontal table. So over here we have friction. The system is released from rest after descending with constant acceleration for two seconds. B hits the floor and does not rebound. Part A show that the acceleration of A before B hits the floor is 0.7 meters per second per second. I'm going to start by labeling all the forces acting in this particular situation. First of all, we can create a split over here and over here. This will help us determine all the forces acting on A only, the pulley, and B only. Let's start off with the particle B. We've got the weight acting vertically downwards, that will be 3G. Now, to prevent the string from breaking, the tension over here has to act upwards. By Newton's third law, for this action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. So, tension over here acting downwards. Let's move on to particle A. So, for particle A, we have the weight acting vertically downwards, which is 4G. Because the particle A is in contact with the table, there will be a normal reaction coming out, which is perpendicular to the contact surface. We can call that RA. Now, as B moves down, so it's accelerating downwards, we can call that acceleration A. A will be accelerating to the right. We can call that acceleration A as well. Remember, we have an inextensible string which is taut, and so the modeling assumption is that the two particles connected by this string will have the same acceleration. So we can call it A for both particles. Okay, because of this tension over here, acting downwards, the tension over there, think about it logically, has to act to the left. By Newton's third law, for this action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. So the tension over here has to act to the right. Now, if the particle A is accelerating to the right, friction acts to the left, and friction is at its maximum because uh, when you have acceleration, maximum friction is achieved, and we know that F max is equal to mu R. So over here, friction acting to the left, I can label it as mu r a. That there, ladies and gents, is my complete force diagram. Now, in part a, we want to show that the acceleration of a before b hits the floor is 0 0.7 meters per second per second. So I'm going to be using the units given for particle b to calculate the acceleration of particle b, but I know that the acceleration of particle b is the same as the acceleration for particle a because we have an inextensible string which is taut. So if I do calculate the acceleration of B, that is essentially the acceleration of A. So we have enough information to use SUVA on B to calculate the acceleration. So for B, we'll take downwards to be positive and we're using SUVA. The distance traveled is 1.4. The system is released from rest, so u is equal to zero. The final velocity when the particle b hits the ground, we don't know. <clears throat> so we can just put an x there. We're trying to calculate the acceleration, question mark, and the time taken for the particle to hit the floor is two seconds. So t is equal to two. Now I can use s equal ut plus a half at squared to find the acceleration. So we have 1.4 is equal to 0 times 2, which is just 0, a half multiplied by a multiplied by t squared, so 2 squared. If I make a the subject, I get a equal to 0 0.7 meters per second per second. Part B, state the modeling assumption used in order to answer part A. Well, this acceleration for B is essentially the same as the acceleration for A. What is our modeling assumption? Like I said initially, we have an inextensible string which is taut. And so the acceleration for both particles connected by this string is the same. Okay, so in extensibility of the string. Part C, find the magnitude of the resultant force exerted on the pulley by the string. So let's have a look at the pulley only, forget particle A, forget particle B. So if we have a look at the pulley, this tension over here is parallel to this horizontal, this tension over here is parallel to this vertical. So I've got something like this. 
Okay? If you look at this very carefully, we see that the resultant force will be acting in this direction. We can call that R. That resultant will split this 90 degrees into two equal angles, 45 degrees each. Okay? Anyways, if I take this particular tension and drag it downwards, I get something like this. That's a right angle triangle. So to work out the resultant force exerted on the pulley by the string, we can use Pythagoras theorem. So R is equal to square root T squared plus T squared. We take the positive square root because we want the magnitude. So we have R is equal to square root 2T squared. Now we need to calculate the tension. So how do we do this? Well, if I look at particle A, I've got some unknowns here, T, R, A and mu. So resolving for A only will not help me calculate T. But if I look at particle B, I've got two forces and there's only one unknown, which is the T. So if I resolve for B only, I can calculate T, the tension. So I'm going to resolve for B only. So resolve in the direction of the acceleration, which is downwards, using F equal MA. The resultant force will be 3G minus T equal to 3A. But we know what A is. Ladies and gents, A is equal to 0 0.7. So we have 3G minus T is equal to 3 multiplied by 0 0.7. So if I make T the subject, I get T equal to 27.3. So that there's my tension force. I can put that back into here. So the resultant force exerted on the pulley by the string will equal square root 2 multiplied by 27.3 squared. Right, so if I put this into my calculator and I round off to three significant figures, I get R equal to 38.6 newtons to three significant figures. So that there's the magnitude of the force exerted on the pulley by the string. Okay, so we have done part C. Now we can move on to part D, and that is to find mu. So in part D, we want to find mu. That mu is associated to the particle A. So I'm going to resolve for A only. The mu is acting in the horizontal direction, so I'm going to resolve horizontally. I can take right to be the positive direction, the direction of the acceleration. Use F equal MA. So my resultant force will be T minus mu RA. is equal to the mass which is 4 multiplied by the acceleration A. But I've got my tension and I've also got my acceleration. My tension is 27.3. So 27.3 minus mu RA is equal to 4 multiplied by the acceleration 0 0.7. Okay, so now I can make mu the subject. I get mu is equal to 27.3 minus 4 lots of 0 0.7 divide by RA. So mu is equal to 24.5 divide by RA. So now we need RA. RA is the normal reaction of the particle A. To work out RA, we need to resolve for A only, but we're going to now resolve vertically. Okay, so resolve for A only, resolve vertically, taking upwards to be the positive direction. Now the particle A is not accelerating vertically, so the resultant force F is equal to zero. What is that resultant force? Well, it will be RA minus 4G. So RA minus 4G is equal to zero, which means that RA is equal to 4G. Now that I've got RA, I can work out mu, I substitute the RA into here. So mu is equal to 24.5 divided by 4g, where g is equal to 9.8. So I can put this into my calculator and I get precisely mu is equal to 0 0.625.
So that there's the coefficient of friction. Let's have a look at part E. Determine whether or not A reaches the pulley. So B is going to strike the ground at a certain velocity, V. We're going to try to calculate that. That velocity, V, becomes the initial velocity, U, for A in its next journey. Okay? We're going to try to calculate this velocity. Now, when B strikes the ground, the string becomes slack. Okay? So the tension will equal zero. A will continue to move. What we want to do is work out the next part of the journey for A. How far does it travel before it comes to rest? But what it is that because the tension is equal to zero when B strikes the ground, in the next part of A's journey, the acceleration is no longer 0 0.7. We're going to calculate that new acceleration. Once we've got that new acceleration, we're going to set the final velocity for A in its next part of the journey to be zero in order to calculate the further distance traveled. Then we're going to add that onto the 1.4 and we're going to check if it's two meter. If it's less than two meter, then the particle A does not reach the pulley. Okay, so we're going to start by using SUVAP for B. Let's take down what's to be positive. So SUVAT. We've got 1.4 meter as our distance, initial velocity is zero. The final velocity we want to work out, the acceleration when the string is taut is 0 0.7 and the time taken for the particle B to hit the ground was two seconds. Okay, so now I can use a SUVAT formula and that SUVAT formula that I can use is V equal U plus A T. So I can substitute my values in. I've got a V equal to zero plus 0 0.7 multiplied by 2. So V is equal to 1.4 meters per second. That there is the velocity at which B hits the ground. It becomes the initial velocity of A in its next journey. Now, because B travels 1.4 meter, A will also have traveled 1.4 meter. Its initial velocity in the next journey is now 1.4 meters per second. Okay, so the string is now slack. The tension is zero. Let's work out the new acceleration for A. So we're going to resolve for A only. <clears throat> we're going to resolve horizontally, taking right to be the positive direction, and we're using F equal to MA. Now the tension is zero, so the resultant force will just be minus mu RA. So minus mu RA is equal to the mass, which is 4, of the particle A, multiplied by the acceleration A. We want to try calculate A. Okay, now RA, we calculated in our previous part of the question, RA was equal to 4G, and our mu was equal to 0 0.625. So if I substitute this in, I get minus 0 0.625 multiplied by 4G is equal to 4A. Notice that the force cancel out. I can divide the whole equation by four. Hence, A is equal to minus 0 0.625 multiplied by G, where G is equal to 9.8. So if I put this into my calculator, I get A equal to minus 6.125. Now we're going to use a SUVAT for A. We're looking at A's next journey. So we're going to use SUVAT for A, taking right to be positive. So SU VAT We want to work out the further distance travelled before A comes to rest so the final velocity has to equal 0 and the initial velocity is 1.4 The acceleration in the next part of A's journey was minus 6.125 and the time taken we don't know so now we can use a SUVAT formula and the appropriate one to use is V squared equal U squared plus 2AS. So we have 0 squared is equal 1.4 squared plus 2 lots of minus 6.125S. Okay, so we can rearrange and if we do this we get S equal minus... 1.4 squared all over 
to lots of minus 6.125. Right, so if I put this into my calculator, I get S equal to 0 0.16. So the particle will come to rest after traveling a further distance of 0 0.16. So the total distance traveled from the starting point for particle A is going to be 1.4 plus 0 0.16 which is equal to 1.56 meter and since 1.56 meter is less than 2 meter particle A does not reach the pulley okay so ladies and gents that there completes the final part of the question which is part E and this exam style question